Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. And on this little collection update, I have the good old new disc box full of stuff. And I'm not going to show you everything at once. We're just going to, I mean, the thumbnail will have shown you, but I'm just going to go through what I got one at a time. Uh, and it's a variety of labels, mostly... Looks like most of these genre stuff in this round. Um, but I'm going to get right into it. And I'm going to start with the new Cauldron Films Blu-rays. First we have Crimes of the Black Cat, Sergio Pastore. And this comes in the side loader, really nice side loader slipcase from uh, Cauldron Films. I've flipped the artwork here so you can see what the alternate artwork looks like. Um... got a bunch of stuff in here including soundtrack and the blu-ray and then a whole bunch of really nice lobby cards this is cool stuff yeah really nice packaging you know I'm, I've been really impressed with cauldron so far they're really doing good stuff and I had never heard of this particular giallo I guess is what it is uh, so this will be brand new to me to watch and then next we have their other release which is Beyond Terror again we have a side load and um, this is what the alternate artwork looks like um, yeah I should have just for Crimes of the Black Cat, it says, after a young model seemingly dies of a heart attack, her lover, Peter Olivier, or Oliver, uh, and his butler begin uh, their own investigation into the death and soon find an intertwined series of murders, all involving a cat and a yellow shawl. One step ahead of the police, but always right behind the killer, Peter manages to piece together clue after clue until the final shocking showdown with the bloodthirsty killer. So that sounds like an interesting giallo plot. And then for this one, um, after a drug-fueled night of violence, a group of young degenerates and their hostages find themselves stranded in a remote abandoned church in rural Spain. Their evening of debauchery and blasphemy quickly turns into greed when they discover a local legend that tells of a vast fortune guarded by the mummies in the catacombs uh, beneath the ruins. Their lust for the treasure is short-lived as they find that the supernatural horror in the catacombs is something further than fear. It is beyond terror. Um, and I should say, these are Blu-ray debuts for sure, but this one is uh, a lost gem that is long overdue for rediscovery, never available on home video in the United States. It makes its worldwide Blu-ray debut with this new four, brand new 4K scan from the original camera negative. Uh, that has been restored to its original grim glory. And it's co-written by Juan Piquer Simon of Pieces and Slugs, so that's exciting. Uh, this has a commentary by film historian Kat Ellinger. Fantastic. And then I should have said that... Let's see here. Released in the Shadows of Dario Argento's wildly successful The Bird with the Crystal Plumage one of over 30 giallo films uh, produced in 1972 in Italy. Uh, let's see here. Previously unavailable in HD or in the proper aspect ratio, Crimes of the Black Cat makes its worldwide Blu-ray debut with an uncut 4K restoration. And this one has a few features. Uh, remembering, remembering Sergio Pastore, interview with Sarah Pastore, uh, and then Sergio Pastore, an... Amir Ville Vole Independente, uh, I guess another little featurette on the director, uh, commentary by Troy Haworth and Nathaniel Thompson, and another commentary track with Fragments of Fear, uh, Giallo podcast, uh, those folks involved with that, and an image gallery, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, but I think that's one of the first commentaries for the... Uh, Fragments of Fear folks and I'm excited to hear that. that that should be a good track 
So those are the first two of the next wave from Cauldron. Very excited about those. Then I have some 4Ks, some import 4Ks. I'm going to start with American Werewolf in London. This is the Turbine Media version. Um, this is not the big old box set that was way more expensive. This is still pricey. I got this directly from Turbine. I can leave a link in the notes below. Um, and so, so yeah, this has got uh, the 4K disc, which of course is region unlocked, and then it has um, two Blu-rays worth of features. I'm not, I didn't get it so much for the features. I'm sure some of them overlap with, you know, like uh, the American Werewolf Arrow edition. And to be honest. I'm sure we'll, I'm just guessing, I'm speculating completely. I have no basis for this, but I feel like there's going to be some kind of a 4K of American Werewolf from Arrow at some point, but I couldn't wait. I just really wanted to get this, and it looks fantastic. I was just watching it today. Um, really, really good-looking new scan, uh, and I don't have any information on it, really, because um, this is a German release, and so a lot of the... Uh, you know, information is not something I can decipher at this time, but uh, it just looks great. Know that. Know that if you ordered, I know it was a little tricky to get. Uh, like, I think there was maybe some Zavi was out and some of the other places you can go for imports weren't there, but for some reason Turbine itself uh, had it and it didn't take that long to get it from them. So if you're a fan of the movie and you can't wait for a uh, stateside 4K, which, you know, again, I don't know when that's coming. I don't know if that's coming. But, you know, who knows? Maybe it is. But if you can't wait, like me, and you really won't love this movie and you want to see it in 4K and it looks wonderful, then go ahead and grab this from Turbine. Another um, apparently sought-after 4K release. I know a lot of people have been talking about this one already. This is the Arrow... Demons 1 and 2, 4K. And uh, this, of course, the Blu-rays are region locked. Uh, the 4Ks are not. Um, and then this has, I'm sure you guys have seen this done, but has the, the pull-away sides, which I'll be honest, I like and I don't like. It's, it's a little hard to handle, and then I'm kind of stuck with all my stuff. But that said... Um, this is the book for this Demons release. I mean, how nice is that? Look at that binding. It's just a beautiful, one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen included with uh, a Blu-ray release. Just beautiful. Um, so then you have a poster. You, I know everybody's shown off the Metropole movie ticket. Uh, and the discs themselves, Demons 1, Demons 2. Um, but, yeah, this one I got from Amazon UK. They had a few in stock, and I don't think they do anymore, unfortunately. Uh, so this one is probably now, you know, made its way into the secondary market in terms of uh, lots of folks trying to make a buck. Um, but... I'm glad I was able to get it before uh, all that went down, and um, it's a great set. Like these, these look fantastic. Uh, I was not at all disappointed. I haven't been disappointed yet with an Arrow 4K. Like they are just absolutely killing it, and this set is amazing. Um, for those who don't remember the Demons movies, look at all this stuff, by the way. Uh, they have to do, they're directed by Lamberto Bava, son of Mario, and they have to do the first one with a movie theater where a bunch of people are sort of mysterious invited to this, uh, screening of a film. They don't know what it is. They get this golden ticket on the subway, these college girls, and they go and, you know, it's just a, it's a sort of a group, a random group of strangers watching this movie and, through happenstance, I'm not really going to explain, they start to turn into demons. It kind of has to do with the movie that's playing on the screen and some other things, but then you have 
kind of a zombie movie, a demon movie within the movie theater and everybody's trying to escape and it's an absolute blast. It's one of my favorite Italian horror films of all time. And um, I think for me, the revelation this time though was Demons 2 because I watched it before. I, I just checked out Demons. Like I just put it on just to kind of see how it would look, which it looks amazing. Uh, and I, then I watched all of Demons 2 and I found myself enjoying Demons 2 more than I ever have. I mean, partially because, again, it looks wonderful, but I think the other thing is I've always watched the first Demons movie before Demons 2, and Demons 1 is so strong that Demons 2 feels like, you know, it's just rehashing that movie, which it is. Um, but this time, for some reason, it felt stronger than that. And, and in this case, Demons 2, of course, it takes like a weird spin on like the beginning is a movie within a movie where we're seeing people in what looks kind of like something resembling the first movie and we find that we sort of pull back and we realize that in this apartment complex a bunch of people in the building are watching this horror movie on tv at the same time and they're all sort of doing different stuff somebody's having a party over here this family's having dinner over here uh and then again through this time the television something causes a person to become a demon and then I didn't fully explain it, but as with the first one, when they scratch or bite somebody, then that person becomes a demon and they're just nasty looking. They have, they have like a, it, in a way it's cooler than zombies because they have this physiological transformation where their teeth grow and they become grotesque and, you know, much scarier than zombies, their eyes, you know, change and everything. And so anyway, the transformation is fun, and that's once you get into this, once you've seen the first movie, and then you get into the second movie, which kicks into gear a little quicker, which I like about, you know, some sequels is they don't have to set anything up. And so yeah, Demons 2 kicks right into it, and then it's like this whole apartment building's under attack, and, you know, it's just a blast. Like, I really had so much fun with it. And I just barely scratched the surface of the, of the features, um you know, like two versions of, this is the first movie, two versions of the film, full length, original cut and Italian and English and a slightly trimmed U S cut. Now it says featuring alternate dubbing and sound effects, lossless English and Italian DTS, uh, HD master audio 5.1 mixes on the original cut. This is getting complicated, but, uh, know that there is a replacement disc program apparently for the first demons. If you did buy this, um, I have to figure out where to get it uh, if I bought from Amazon UK. I know they already put out something if you bought from them direct. But anyway, uh, I guess there was some slight audio issue with the first disc. So definitely keep an eye out for... Um, if you go to Arrow's socials, I think you can find the replacement program information for Demons 1. But anyway... Multiple soundtracks, uh, you've got a new audio commentary with Kat Ellinger and Heather Drain, always fun. Archival audio, audio commentary with Lombardo Bava and special makeup effects artist Sergio Stivaletti, and it's moderated by journalist Loris Kirchi. And another commentary by those two and Claudio Simonetti and actress Goretta Goretta. Uh, a new visual essay. I mean, there's just tons of stuff on here. That's just on the first disc. Um, I did notice that my Synapse Blu-rays, I have the two Steelbooks, the the uh, Demons 1 and Demons 2. There's definitely some featurette stuff that didn't make it to these. So if you have those versions, either the Steelbooks or the regular Blu-rays from Synapse, I would hold on to those if you get this. And or maybe wait, maybe Synapse. This is another case where another 4K may be in the works. I don't know. I don't have any information on that. But it seems plausible that Synapse is probably going to do their own re-up 4K versions of these. Um, but they will be missing the Arrow Extra. So that's part of the reason I never really regret getting an Arrow. I've never regretted getting an Arrow <laughs> Special Edition ever. Um, but anyway... Just a great set, beautiful transfers, very excited to have Demons 1 and 2 and American Werewolf in 4K. Um, just a f few more here from Scream Factory, the new one, Event Horizon. Uh, this is their first big release in a while, um, and I've flipped the artwork back to the old standby artwork. 
for this. Um, but this is a really good looking transfer. I know everybody's sort of bemoaning the fact that they weren't able to find uh, extra footage for this one. But this is a new 4K scan of the original camera negative. So this looks really good. And I wasn't disappointed at all with how it looks. Uh, it has an audio commentary with director Paul W.S. Anderson and producer Jeremy Bolt. The Making of Event Horizon, a five-part documentary. I just barely got a chance to dig into that. It's already amazing. Um, the Point of No Return, the filming of Event Horizon, uh, Secrets, Deleted and Extended Scenes, and the Unseen Event Horizon. A whole bunch of stuff in here on this uh, collector's edition from Scream Factory. So they came out swinging. They really brought a great, you know, it's a really great, one of the great, you know, sci-fi thrillers of the 90s. And uh, I haven't seen it in a while. I was kind of holding out for something like this, a really nice edition of it. And I'm glad I did because, like I said, it looks fantastic. And uh, it's just another one of those Screen Fractor releases that has a ton of great features on it and everything like that. So I had to pick this one up. So that's Event Horizon. And then I've got a couple more Shout Factory releases. These are the web, the last couple website exclusives where they are, um, as they've been wont to do, putting out a thousand unit runs, limited edition runs on the, um, on the website. And so these limited edition runs seem to be doing pretty well because they're selling out. And so I am a sucker and I have bought the last couple rounds of the limited editions. This one is a double bill of the Amazons, uh, and Barbarian Queen. And these don't have much in the way of extras. And I'm not sure how fresh the scans are. They don't make any claims to the scans, but um, I'm sure it's as good as they're going to look. Uh, the Amazons, it says, Mystery and excitement await as you enter the fantastic medieval world of the Amazons where magic reigns supreme and the betrayal looms at every turn. In order to defeat an evil wizard uh, and, and his vicious minions, the Amazons must recover a talisman sword that has been lost for 500 years. Only the beautiful young warrior, uh, Dayala, has the vision needed to retrieve the sword. She is joined on her mission by the lovely Tashi on a perilous journey against the power of the wizard's magic, the savage, savagery of fierce tribesmen and generations of family rivalry. So that's the Amazon, and then uh, that's from 1986, and Barbarian Queen from 85. That's the one I am more familiar with, but I haven't seen. Uh, on the eve of her wedding, uh, Amethia sees the world sees her world dissolve. Her groom imprisoned, her village raised, and her friends attacked and slaughtered, becoming the barbarian queen. She vows revenge and retribution, enticing and then destroying her adversaries. So that is this double bill. It's one of the limiteds, and then one that it was released with is a women in prison movie called The Big Bust Out. And this one I had never even heard of, to be honest. This one does have a new 2K scan from the uh, camera negative. Um, these are both region, I think all the screams and shout here I'm mentioning are region A locked. Um, so the big bust out, uh, it says inside a high security prison, seven beautiful women become allies against their sadistic cell block matrons and stage a massive violent escape. They make their way to the home of one of the women's ex-boyfriends who reveals his true sympathies by selling them into white slavery. In a furious gun battle, the women escape from their slavers, but it only is only the beginning of a long and desperate journey to freedom. So that sounds pretty rough, but a lot of uh, women in prison movies can be. Uh, it's got Vanetta McGee. That's part of the reason I was excited about it. She's great. Um, and yeah, so I don't know. Again, I was suckered by the limited nature of those, and so I had to pick them up from the Shout Factory website. Definitely keep an eye out on Shout Factory's socials because they seem to be doing these surprise announcements maybe once a month now, it looks like. I mean, I could be misjudging the time, but it seems like maybe it was a month, maybe it was even less that they put out the last round before this. And it's always a 1,000 copies, and it seems like the week after they've announced it, they're already starting to sell out. 
you know, depending on the title. Um, I, I know that the uh, this double bill was already selling out, and I think this was close behind. So by the time this posts, they may already be sold out, and I do apologize for that. Um, but again, just sort of keep yourself on alerts from Scream Factory if that kind of thing appeals to you, or if you'd rather avoid it altogether, then don't <laughs> don't look at those socials, and I'll try not to be talking about these too much, but I will probably be picking up the exclusives when I can, just so you guys are aware of them. But that is it for this collection update. Uh, hopefully there's some stuff in here you can enjoy. I know some of it is a little harder to get at this time, but um, I'm always hoping for you know, new additions, whether it be, uh, like I said, an Arrow 4K of American Werewolf or a Synapse Double 4K of Demons 1 and 2, just additions that people could then get themselves if these aren't available. Uh, and definitely keep an eye on the folks over at Cauldron Films because um, I'm really excited about it. I just, their last round of releases was very solid and these look great. I mean, I haven't dug into them yet, but I'm excited to dig in. And, uh, I think a lot of other folks were very jazzed about these. They sold pretty well. Uh, this is, I mean, it's a great cover. You know, I just love these. Anyway, I won't go too on too, on too much about Cauldron Films, but definitely go to Diabolic DVD or cauldronfilms.com and check out what, uh, they have left in terms of these and what they might be teasing for their next round which I know they've got some stuff in the works and it sounds exciting like I'm like vinegar syndrome excited about whatever they have coming next like they hinted at something recently and it was just vague enough that I have no clue what the movie could be but based on these and what they've already released uh it's going to be interesting so if you're a vinegar syndrome fan you're a fan of like sort of that curated lesser known genre you know horror adjacent kind of stuff it looks like that's where they're going, and they may maybe they'll go action too, but that's also in the Vinegar Syndrome wheelhouse. So definitely check out Cauldron Films uh, if you can. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, please, and uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.